Welcome to Case Close with former Attorney General John Swallow. John Swallow has worked in both the private and public sector, first as a lawyer for a multinational company, and then as the Attorney General of the state of Utah. Even more powerfully, he defended himself against false charges and beat the government to clear his name. Here's former Attorney General John Swallow. How's it going, John? Are you having a good day? I'm having a great day. <laughs> Thanks for having me on your show. Yes, sir. Well, I want to get into something that you might see in like action packed movie you'll see in Better Call Saul, but conspiracy charges or like conspiracy liability, RICO cases, like these are all big words that they just kind of throw into a plot. If you had the horror segment of Halloween, okay, front mm -hmm. and center about what you could possibly be charged with or mm -hmm. accused of that could be so damning that you'd never be able to get through it, but it wasn't really your fault, it would be a RICO or a conspiracy charge. Oh my gosh, okay? yeah. Because in conspiracy, you're basically charged with working in concert with a bad guy. Mm. So remember where your mom used to say, hey, you're kind of known by your friends, and you say, oh mom, come on, these are just my buddies. Well, it turns out she was right, because if your friends are bad people, and they're doing bad things, and you're working with them, then someone is gonna to try to find low-hanging fruit, which could just be you, and try to pin the bad acts of these friends of yours on you as a, someone who's working in concert with them. Mm -hmm. That's conspiracy, and that's kind of a loose definition of RICO as well, yeah. where you have two or three different isolated but connected incidents of wrongdoing with a group of two or three people working in concert together, concert together where the bad acts of one can really spill into the innocent person who just happens to be close friends or allies, mm -hmm. but they want to get everybody together. That's conspiracy. That's kind of a loose definition of RICO. And yeah. it's bad news for everybody. Well, I could see someone out there, they just get a weird text or a phone call from their friend at like 11.45 at night. Hey, can you give me a ride? And you didn't know that they like just robbed a grocery store, robbed a corner shop. Absolutely. And you may be as innocent as the morning sun, right? Mm -hmm. But if the, the investigators can pin you in a close relationship with those guys, and if someone wants to kind of cut a deal and implicate you in their planning or orchestration or in any way, you can be facing an all-out assault on your freedom through a felony, through a RICO, or some kind of conspiracy charge. It's that deadly. And what happens, let me explain what happens yeah. in that kind of a situation. So I was aware of a criminal trial once where a very high profile defendant mm -hmm. was being tried for numerous felony counts. And the trial went like this. They kept talking about everyone else in the group, but not about the person who was the named defendant on trial. The strategy of the prosecution was to paint the corruption and criminality of the other defendants. And all they wanted to do with the defendant on trial was link him to the other two defendants in a conspiracy oh, wow. charge. So if you're sitting there watching the trial unfold, you're saying, well, there's nothing being said about this person who's on trial. Everything bad is being said about the other two people. And then the hook comes at the end where they say, now this person that seems innocent was part of the cabal, was part of the conspiracy. And they get you for all of the bad acts Mm -hmm. of the two people that were the guilty people. The innocent co-conspirator in the conspiracy theory and liability is you get nailed with the bad acts of the co-conspirators, even if you didn't directly participate in all of their bad acts. And that is typically a theory that's used by prosecutors very effectively mm -hmm. to convict a person who someone can associate with a group of bad actors. That's why you have to yeah. listen to your mom when she says, hey, who your friends are, really matters and they really do in a conspiracy charge yeah and so how the the prosecutor would go about it is like i just want to get as many people on this case as possible to convict because i guess what is the motivation to just getting this seemingly supposedly innocent person wrapped up in this is it to just make it look as bad as possible well, who knows what the motivations of prosecutors are. Yeah. If the question is, what is motivating a prosecutor to go after an innocent person, mm -hmm. the prosecutor may not be that convinced that mm. the person is innocent 
or guilty. We want to presume that yeah. prosecutors believe that everybody they charge is guilty of the conspiracy, but it's an easy theory to support. Yeah. Um, you know, some, if, if, they, if, there's, if there's any underlying reason or connection between the person they're charging um, as a co-conspirator and the others who are primary defendants in the case, they get an extra conviction. Mm. They, they, they can talk about the sex appeal, frankly, yeah. in the media of, of a conspiracy versus just people that are committing individual crimes that aren't related. Mm -hmm. um, and, it, and, and under the, raw, the laws for RICO, the penalties can actually be enhanced. And so mm -hmm. there are things about a RICO claim or a conspiracy claim that can give juice to a prosecution. And so I'm not saying that prosecutors ever intentionally go after someone who is an innocent bystander who just happens mm -hmm. to get wrapped into it. But it's pretty easy for aggressive investigators to kind of cross over and buy what they're being told by law enforcement officers that this person who is acting innocent because he or she might be innocent is so closely connected to the others that he must be guilty mm -hmm. and justice requires going after the other person. So I'm not really talking so much about misdeeds of a prosecution in mm -hmm. getting conspiracy charges going. It's to warn people that who you associate with and the kinds of activities that they are engaged in matters and you should be really careful not to discount what your friends are involved in if you're going to be close associates and allies with them and walking around with them at one o'clock in the morning or something of that nature because you never know what they're doing. And if they're mm. doing something illegal, if they're doing something that could bring liability, civil liability to you or anything else like that, it's pretty easy for you to get wrapped into them. And certainly if they're of the nature that they're going to be doing these types of acts, their character might not be such that they would be protecting you if they can get out of a mess by fingering someone else. And that's what you yeah. have to be careful of, the conspiracy claim. So when, let's say, someone out there who wants to enter into a, let's say, a business partnership, that research into that other partnership is super important because their finances might be wrapped up in something that you don't want your finances wrapped up in. No, that's exactly right. People today seem more interested in making money than about realizing what can happen if they're wrong about how they go about it. They're, they're more interested in making money, making a dollar, uh, paying for their children's education, paying off their home, buying a house, whatever it is, that they're not that careful about who they partner with to do it. So, for example, if, if I'm working with someone else in a business and we're raising investment capital, mm -hmm. And I'm not aware that my best friend, who is kind of leading the charge for this, is, is acting fraudulently with respect to investment dollars, pocketing money, for example, about to having a Ponzi scheme. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm not careful in that relationship. And I'm not aware of what they're doing. Just by, by virtue of my associate with, association with them or my partnership with them, I can be liable for their bad acts if they can connect the dots between that person and me as a co-conspirator. And I can say all I want, that I'm innocent, mm -hmm. I didn't know. But if they can somehow make that connection with a jury, a prosecution just asks themselves, can I get a conviction out of this? And that's where conspiracy comes to play because the consequence for being involved in a conspiracy is the consequence of having committed the crime in the first place. In other words, there's not a lighter sentence and there's not a lighter consequence just because you are a co-conspirator, but not actually being the trigger man, mm. then there's no lighter one than, than if you'd actually done the deed yourself. So I guess the caution for people is you need to know what your partners are doing. You need to know who your partners are. You need to know who your friends are and what they're doing. Otherwise, be very, very careful who you associate with because through conspiracy liability, you can be tagged with the whole crime. That's crazy that you just let's say you just had a job or just started working with someone and now you're on the hook for all these things that happened that you might not even were present for, but then you started participating after the fact. Right. And you know, the, the, the burden is on the state still to show that you maybe knew or understand mm -hmm. stood, or you had some reason to believe that something was going on. But, it, but what the case is, is it's about what the other folks are doing. And all they have to do is then tie you to those people and convince the jury that you knew what was going on, even if you didn't know what was going on. 
So inferences, um, you know, when you're overly trusting of your friends, sometimes a jury will see things differently than the fact that maybe you just had blind trust for a friend. They, in other words, the jury is not required to look at your innocent explanation of why you were there. They're entitled to think worst case. Well, mm -hmm. he was obviously there because his brother was, was doing this and he and his brother are certainly not gonna tell the truth about why they were involved together. And so my point in talking about this is conspiracy liability is just as powerful as primary liability. Uh -huh. And you really have a burden if you're going to be in business with someone to be able to prove that you didn't know and reasonably shouldn't have known about the illegal activities of your co-conspirator. Because if they charge you with conspiracy liability, it can be checkmate if you can't prove that you knew absolutely nothing about what was going on and you really weren't working in concert with them. Let me give you an example. Yeah. There was a case I'm very familiar with where the government alleged that there was this super close relationship with a member of government and a couple of people that they thought were bad actors. Mm -hmm. And they brought out in the evidentiary room and, and presented to the jury um, a, a consolidated sequence of like 400 phone calls and text messages between this defendant and the two other defend, uh, bad actors, right? And the prosecution was trying to make the case that with so many communications between this defendant and these other people, there must have been a conspiracy going on. Mm. And the truth was, there was a, a really high volume of these calls and text messages for the first two months of the relationship. And then there was no communication for three or four years. But they made it, and then a couple of communications at the end, they made it sound like all the communications were during the whole relationship. And because of the great work by the defense team, they were able to isolate the communications and show that there was not an ongoing con continuing relationship during the alleged back bad activity, but it happened on the very front end and on the very back end, but there was no continuing relationship. And so their conspiracy claim failed. Mm -hmm. But it's easy for the government or for a prosecutor to make something appear as if it didn't, wasn't, wasn't accurate. And as a co-conspirator, if you're not on your toes, you're not careful about that relationship. If you're not careful about messaging, text messages, which are all producible in a criminal investigation, you can get yourself crosswise pretty quickly with the government, with a prosecutor, and actually be convicted for something you didn't actually participate in because it's so easy to prove a conspiracy. Well, and it seems like it's a lot easier right now because how intertangled we are. Like we have social media, we can text each other, call each other from anywhere with like Facebook Messenger or something. So it's really important that you're not, like you know the person that you're dealing with, either a business partner or you know, like a coworker, things of that nature. Yeah, I'd say even more than that, I'd say we're very trusting of people. We, we really give people their space and we really assume that people that we like are acting honorably. And so we get into relationships, we don't do a lot of due diligence on the relationship, we're very trusting, a neighbor recommends someone they're working with. We, truly want to make money quickly because we want to take care of a debt or we want to have a nice car or a boat or we want to buy a house, interest rates are going up. If we're not careful about the activities we engage in or the people we associate with. And I'm here to say that who you associate with, especially in a business venture, especially if you're dealing with anyone else's money in mm. an investment or someone says, hey, find someone that can invest this money in this little thing we've got going on, all of a sudden you can be liable for investment fraud. when. All you were doing was trying to introduce a friend to what you thought was a great opportunity. All of a sudden, now you're a partner, you're a business partner, you're a co-conspirator with someone who's defrauding people, and then you can be liable for criminal fraud on a conspiracy theory. So all those influencers that you might see on TikTok or you know Instagram reels where they say, give me $5,000 and I'll give you $10,000 or $20,000 back, you need to be really skeptical of because you don't exact, especially if they're being ambiguous with things. And they right. just, and they're always really, their salespeople are always really nice. You have to make sure that you have done your due diligence, making sure that that money isn't from a Ponzi scheme or. Well, there's a sucker born every single day. Mm -hmm. And I say, and, and you hate to say it, but it's true. If it's too good to be true, it is too good to be true. There's no such thing as an easy dollar. And most of the time, if you're hearing about opportunities, financial opportunities that promise a huge return for a minimal investment, 
it's because the person you're dealing with can't be trusted. And you've got to protect yourself and not be liable for a conspiracy on a conspiracy theory for someone else's fraud. And that's all I'm trying to say. Oh, yeah. Well, I think that's really like we've covered a lot, especially like protecting yourself business wise, protecting yourself on a personal level with your neighbors to make sure that, you know, just because Mr. and Mrs. Jones are really nice and they were trying to be you're trying to be reciprocate, you could just get caught in the middle of all, right. not caught in the middle of it all. Well, and what really surprises me is I kind of have had my career in law and in the Attorney General's office and even as a member of the legislature in politics is how many people can't be trusted. Mm. How many people have a hidden agenda going on? How many people are looking for a sucker to walk through the door and be an easy target for them? How many people are willing to ask you if you know someone with resources, can they invest in this project and they'll give you a piece of the action or a percentage of whatever they raise just for making the introduction. That's an easy conspiracy case. So be careful. You know, you really need to know the people you're dealing with. You need to be very careful when it involves someone else's money that you're not making the mistake of playing into some fraudster's hands and then implicating yourself in a conspiracy case because you didn't do your homework before you made that introduction, before you took that, you know, percentage, that finder's fee, and you actually end up spending money from a neighbor who invested in another neighbor that you really didn't know. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much, John. That was, that was really informative. It was really compact. I think that's super actionable as well because you can't get to know someone over one lunch meeting or one dinner party. Yeah, buyer beware. Anytime you have someone asking you for money or helping, you, helping them raise money, that antenna should go up and you should be very super careful whenever it deals with someone else's money because prosecutors are very interested in stopping predators and you don't want to be unwittingly thrown into the pool with another predator and, and charged on a conspiracy theory. Thank you, John, for talking about that. And thank you for coming here to listen to former Attorney General John Swallow talk on Case Closed.